You are now listening to the Fantasy Whisper Podcast with your hosts, Johnny, Game Time Hicks, and Big Travi. Why, hello and welcome to the Fantasy Whispers Podcast. That's Big Travi, and I'm Johnny Game Time Hicks, and we're here to give you that fantasy football fix on this week seven preview episode, Travis, of the Fantasy Whispers. Part one, because yeah. listen, it's it's so meaty, it's so juicy. We got to give you two parts, man. We got to break it up. Whisper Nation, we're dropping every single game preview, and we're starting with the first half of games today. And we're giving you every single fantasy relevant player. And we're breaking them down. Me and Johnny are gonna give you give you that knowledge, drop some knowledge in your ear hole. We're definitely gonna do that, as well as <laughs> uh, Travis. So I, I went to I went to the Instagram. And we did a, the I did a, IG. A, the IG, and I did a Instagram live, which we're we're starting to do on the daily, around three o'clock ish, and I had I had a lot of people ask me questions. Right, it was great. It was great. We love Whisper Nation. We love it, and yes. we had one shout out of a guy that was just like, "Hey, can you answer my DM?" And my response to him was that. Like, we're trying to get to as many DMs as we can. And if we don't get to you, please just email the show. We'd love to get your question on. We want to start doing a little bit of a mailbag. As well as if you don't get on to that show and I don't answer then, check us out on Sunday mornings before our lineup show. And we will certainly try to get to your questions. Then we're going to try to get as many people's questions uh, about lineups on Sundays. And we'll know a little bit more of who's in and who's out. Yeah, another good uh, strategy, Johnny, is we post all these graphics all day long, um, different stats, uh, rankings, top tens, all these good, nice graphics. Comment on any one of those, your question. We will try to get to that as well. So that's on Instagram as well. We love the Whisper Nation, and we're here for you guys. We did this. You know, we embarked on this journey to start this podcast for you, the people, in order to get you guys that knowledge that you need uh, to dominate your league every week. Yep. All right. Today, like we were saying before, we got the preview show. We're previewing all of Week 7 games minus this horrible, horrible (laughs) <laughs> Let me just say one more time. Horrible Thursday night game. And yes, that includes my team. And I'm saying that it is awful. I don't, dude, I don't even, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't let's jump into the news and notes. Let's yeah. move right on before we lose Johnny. Yeah, let's do it. News and notes from around the NFL. That's right, Johnny. The news and notes are brought to you by Fanatic. That's F-A-N-A-T-I-Q. That's where fantasy meets IQ. We talk about these guys every week, Johnny, and we're going to talk. I'm going to talk about a little bit about them again today. They keep stepping their game up over there at Fanatic. If you have an Apple device and you have that app store, you download the Fanatic app, F-A-N-A-T-I-Q, And they've got every single fantasy-relevant player in there. Their last three games worth of stats, so you can see trends that are happening right before your eyes. They have great uh, charts, graphs. Uh, They also have all the beat reporter news, all the the news updates that we go over every time. They have it right there in the palm of your hand. And if you want our rankings, Johnny, they've got those too. I mean, they literally have everything you need. They're like a Costco, but for fantasy football. And I just love these guys. Yep, and as their awesome slogan goes, win the week, win the next, and win your league, and that's what we're here to help you do. All right, Travis, so first up, we got the big news that came out the other day about uh, Devonta Freeman. We got on the old IG, and we told uh, the, the our sleep, our, our whisper nation exactly what we thought about it, but we'll go over it today on the show, and, that's, and then today, Devonta Freeman had his surgery On his core muscle injury, source said he was in Philadelphia, which always means a trip to expert Dr. William Mayers. And we are told that the procedure went pretty well. However, he is on IR, Travis, and he's not expected to be. If he can come back, if he does come back, they're saying week week 16 16 would be the, the soonest he'd come back. 
that's a fantasy championship week in most leagues. Uh, I think you, you're safe dropping Devonta Freeman. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and there's no guarantee if he comes back. You know, it depend uh, if they're in a, a playoff bound matchup, maybe they might use him. But I don't even know if you could trust him then. Um, well, that's like so. uh, you think about it. His game back against the Steelers, I think it was seven carries, maybe five yeah. or seven carries. Like not a good amount in a first game back. And we got to expect that Ito Smith and Tevin Coleman will be sharing a big part of the load down the stretch. Sure. Um, we'll get more into these two later on uh, yeah. in the matchup preview, but I'm excited to kind of go back and forth with you on those two. All right. Um, we had Allen Robinson was downgraded to a didn't do not practice, did not practice on Thursday. A little bit of a concern here. Uh, certainly would upgrade Taylor Gabriel even more. I, you know, I'm starting to get on your bandwagon here. You kind of called this out a couple weeks ago uh, where you're like, hey, watch out for this guy. And he's starting to become one of Mitch Trubisky's favorite targets in Chicago. So um, certainly watch watch out for that for Sunday morning. See if he ends up giving it a go tomorrow. Tomorrow's practice, Friday practice will be a, a big indication on, on whether he'll be able to play this weekend. Um, yeah, shout out to to Matt Harmon with football guys. He did a breakdown of Taylor Gabriel. And basically it's just like this. He is a really good wide receiver. When he's treated as a good wide receiver, he does good things. He's got great speed. He's got great route running ability. I think he is really, um, he's really excelling under Matt Nagy there in Chicago. Yep. Uh, we had the, this is, I, I almost as a Arizona Cardinals fan, I don't really care for this news here. Uh, the Saints <laughs> have played placed wide receiver Ted Ginn on injured reserve. Um, he wasn't really doing much this year, kind of like the year when he came to the Arizona Cardinals, didn't really do much. Uh, just a little bit bitter there. Um, <laughs> here, Travis, here's what, what I'll what is, say. Yeah, what is this? What here, kind of fantasy impact do you think this has? Here's what I'll say. It makes Cameron Meredith a lot more interesting. If you look at the game, uh, the historical Monday night game right before their bye, he had five targets, went off for a touchdown. Um, also, on the flip side, the other wide receiver there is yeah. Tra Traquan Smith, the rookie. And here's the thing about Traquan Smith, Johnny. Last year, uh, last year's draft, 2017 draft, the Saints didn't need a running back, and they took Alvin Kamara. And we saw what happened. They yep. used Alvin Kamara. He excelled. He was a fantasy darling, MVP in a lot of leagues, uh, fantasy-wise. Same story this year. They didn't really need wide receiver. They drafted Traquan Smith. So Sean Payton does this. When he doesn't need a gadget, but he sees somebody there he likes, he takes him. And uh, I could see Traquan Smith seeing a lot of work down the line. He looked good. Not a lot of targets to go yeah, along just around three, because... Just three right, targets. right. But uh, not a lot of targets because of Michael Thomas being there. But I still think that we've seen if the Saints defense doesn't rebound this year, we've seen the number two wide receiver for Drew Brees be valuable. So yep. I would take a flyer on either one of those guys. Maybe watch a little bit of film for me personally. I think that Meredith is the nicer play. He's more further along in his NFL career. He's got some more experience. All right. Cowboys wide receiver Terrence Williams has been suspended for the next three weeks of the NFL season. Um, not really big news there. He wasn't really doing anything before that. Um, Might benefit the offense. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> update. Oh, okay, so this was kind of crazy. We had a first. Oh, we had a. This, yep. Yep. Uh, this, yeah. I know. So first, it's like first, it's Halloween around the corner because this was like some spooky, weird stuff going on <laughs> yeah. out of Minnesota today. And, and we are in a we're in a group text, right, with our league of record and we get a text. So it, the, what we're talking about here is Dalvin Cook. It first came out that Dalvin Cook was a full participant in practice. Right. So that yeah. was the update. Well, and basically then, what had happened was Zimmer came out and said he wasn't limited. Yeah. So everybody in the media, you know, salivating for good news on Dalvin Cook was like, hey, it, he was a full participant. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, not so fast, as Johnny will tell you. Yeah. Uh, and it was a matter of minutes later, it came. We got another little uh, update there on the Fanatic app that said, no, 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 wait a second. It was Dalvin Cook was officially listed as a did not practice. Huge difference. <laughs> Uh, so Travis, I mean, 
And from what it sounds like, Johnny, they pulled him from practice. Yeah. So he started. So I don't. I don't know, I don't know what's going on there. I want to avoid at all costs. If I'm a Latavius Murray owner, I'm a little excited about this. Uh, we'll get more into that matchup. I just, oh, uh, man, poor Dalvin Cook owners. You drafted yeah. this guy as your second pick, sometimes first because he's at the end of that round. Yep. Man, oh, man. Yeah, that's it's sad. All right. Uh, next up, we had DeAndre Hopkins was downgraded to a, uh, did not practice and Thursday practice. Uh, Travis, I'm to me, I'm not really worried about this. Uh, he, we've seen this several times throughout these first six weeks where he doesn't practice. Now, if he doesn't practice tomorrow, then I think that's major news. Uh, yeah. but to this point, I would agree. I'm not really, um, we yeah, had- Friday's the, Friday's the big day. So tomorrow we're recording on Thursday. You guys right. will be listening to it on Friday. If he's not practicing by the time you listen to this, that would be cause for concern. Right. And for right. me, it would be a big upgrade to Will Fuller and Kiki Cutie. Yep. All right. Uh, T.Y. Hilton was downgraded to limited in Thursday's practice. Uh, we had a listener on IG today ask about T.Y. Hilton. If he goes, Travis, how confident are you rolling him out there? I am not as confident as I would be, but I, I'm, I, I'm probably trying to look elsewhere listen if you have ty hilton you've survived without him the last couple weeks i would hopefully you got some of these waiver guys that are decent uh as a backup plan like i like really really like curse this week i like taylor gabriel who we talked about already even chasing some of the points with albert wilson might be better than ty and i only say that because tredavious white tredavious white has done a really good job i mean he gave up the touchdown last week to deandre hopkins but that's deandre hopkins who has an incredible catch radius mm-hmm. uh ty hilton in a game back from injury i'm not trusting as much here I, and that's more to do with the matchup not ty i mean listen buy low on ty and i hopefully, yeah, hopefully i am hoping he kind of struggles this first week but comes out healthy then you can really attack those owners uh for buying ty hilton yep uh evan ingram was a full participant in practice and it's looking like he's going to give it a go in week seven, Travis, against this horrible Atlanta defense. If he gives it a go, how confident are you that uh, I, you could play uh, Evan? Ingram? I am supremely confident. If you check the player stay away article at the fantasy whispers.com, he's essentially my play of the week. Evan Ingram could not come back fast enough for this Giants offense. They need him there. And I think it opens up everything for everybody else, including Eli. It's a great matchup. If you saw last week, my my must play tight end was Austin Hooper against this uh, or against Tampa Bay, and that was because of the soft the soft defense. I also like Evan Ingram as my must play tight end against a soft Atlanta defense here on Monday night. Asking asking for a buddy of mine, uh, OJ Howard or Evan Ingram this week. Answered this one on Instagram. I'm taking I'm taking. Uh, Evan Ingram, sorry about that, lapsed. And that's because actually Cleveland, although you know getting gashed by the run and kind of a little bit by wide receivers, has been very stout against the tight end. Yeah. That's actually where they've been pretty good. So I would actually heed uh, your expectations for the Tampa Bay tight ends this week. All right, and then the last bit of news before we jump into today's show, and that's no practice for Jaguars running back Leonard Fournette. That is not a good indication. Playing Sunday is unlikely to happen. Rolling out. Yeah, I mean, this is this is kind of expected, right, Johnny? I mean, this was we kind of knew that it was probably going to be after the bye. The other interesting note uh, I think you're probably about to get to is TJ Yeldon, though, at practice. Yeah. Did not participate Wednesday, but it looks like he got back to some limited fashion on Thursday. Uh, Jamal Charles getting some extra love this week. Uh, I mean, we've kind of seen this the last few weeks with TJ Yeldon. So, I, I mean, definitely stay monitored to us as we will keep you updated <laughs> as well as check out that Fanatic app, and, and that'll keep you updated on what you should do for sure. But if hey, if Yeldon comes back, I'm, I'm playing Yeldon for sure. Yes, sir. Um, all right. Let's jump into the show. Let's do it. All right. The first game that we are going to talk about is the early game, the London in game. London town. Oh, you sound like you're from London. <laughs> that was that was equally like as Chinese. terrible. Yeah, that was equally as terrible as the movie. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but we had the Tennessee Titans at the LA Chargers. This is a 45 point over under, and the LA Chargers are favored by six and a half points, Travis. Um, surprisingly, Phillip Rivers, he has been a very, very solid fantasy quarterback this year. However, he's going up against this Tennessee defense that has actually been pretty stout against the quarterback position. And you pair that with the fact that Melvin Gordon has just been tearing it up lately. What is your outlook on both Phillip Rivers and Melvin Gordon going into this game? Oh, I'm just like, how good is Melvin Gordon? Like, how good are the Chargers, Johnny? Like, the Chargers offense, we talk about, you just talked about how good they are. They're the most, they're the second most explosive team in the league, Johnny. Okay. They have 35 plays. Can you, can, of can I just 20 say, or more yards? Can I just say how much I, I just hate LA fans right now? Like everything's just going <laughs> your guys' way. First you get LeBron, then like all of a sudden there's hey, a baby, super and team he plays in the Rams. The night. And the then, king is here. Yeah. And then there's like this, this, uh, you know, LA Rams are this super team undefeated. Ooh, and then. You also have the the the, the, the evil step the, like the 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 evil stepchild that nobody likes, uh, L.A. Chargers that are just also killing it. And I you know literally, I think literally the the Chargers are becoming they're rounding into that Super Bowl contender that everybody's yeah. been like they were the dark horse Super Bowl contender. They don't even have Joey Bosa back yet, right? Which makes that defense even more mean and nasty. Which it's it's been turning the corner over the last three weeks. But what I'm getting out here is. There's reports coming out this week that the Chargers aren't filling the stadium enough and they're worried they're going to have to go back to San Diego. Yeah, crazy. Bro, they're killing it football-wise and they can't get anybody to come watch the game. Yeah, kind of ironic, isn't it? Isn't yeah. it ironic? <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. I do. So, so getting back, back to, the, to game. the game. Yes, okay. So Yes, the Chargers are the second most explosive team in the league, Johnny. 35 plays, gaining 20 or more yards. I want pieces of this offense, which includes Keenan Allen, who is still a big buy low for me, Johnny, because he's getting 26.2% of this market share. So let's do the math here. 26% of the market share on an offense that has 35 plays that gain more than 20 yards. I want parts of Keenan Allen and people keep telling me I'm crazy for this. You should go to your Keenan Allen owner and tell him this guy stinks. Yeah. I'll take him off your hands for you. Exactly. I would do the same thing. He's just not getting into the end zone right now. Right. But I mean, they, their schedule will get a little bit more difficult. You still like it. It's still favorable uh, for fantasy purposes, but they haven't really needed to lean on Melvin uh, on, on Keenan Allen to this point, but I certainly think that there will be games where, you know, like Keenan Allen is an elite talent. He's very, very good. You want that guy on your team. All right. And so you're starting Melvin Gordon. You're starting Keenan Allen. Are you starting? Um, are, are you? Um, excuse me if I could spit this out here. Eckler, are you are you starting Eckler yeah, in this game? And the reason I will is because they're six and a half point favorites. We've tend to see these blowouts happen with the favored team in London. Um, and so I think that by the time Melvin Gordon gets his, you know, his nut, so to speak in this game, you're going to have Eckler come in and, and do the cleanup work. And he's going to get a lot of the, uh, you know, wind out the clock carries and like, so he won't get worked as much in the passing game. I feel like in this yeah. game, but I think he's going to be that backup that comes in. And I think the Titans are just so bad right now. Yeah. I, yeah, I was crazy him. is he's averaging 6.4 yards per carry. That's yeah. insane. Like I think both guys are like, yeah, I think both guys are really effective. And that was the thing we've talked about it a couple shows now. Melvin Gordon becoming a very effective runner, which is huge for him because the opportunity was always there. A guy in another league traded away Melvin Gordon. I thought it was nuts in this money league I'm in, Johnny. And he told me I, there's just no way he can keep up this scoring pace. And I said, yes, there yeah. is because he's done it like obviously he didn't do it at this pace last year but the opportunity was there as such he just needed to get better running the ball and he has done that um so it's kind of funny that he's been getting so many touchdowns and yet everyone's big worry uh coming out of his first year is he doesn't score touchdowns but yeah because yeah, he didn't scoring. yeah he didn't have any of that first right. that rookie year yeah you know who his offensive coordinator was then <laughs> yeah. Mike McCoy. That's that's yeah. who. Gosh, I yeah. hope he gets fired. 
Yeah, I hope it, he's. I'm in. pretty sure it's happening as we speak right yeah. now. Yeah, they're in the locker room. That hopefully that. All right, Travis. On the other flip side of this, uh, are you starting anybody on this Tennessee offense? Deion I'm Lewis. actually, yeah, I'm warming up to Deion Lewis in PPR formats, and that's because yeah, if you look sure. at the back-to-back games, what the Chargers have done, because they have been blowing teams out or, or handling teams, they I should say. Uh, Jalen Richard in that blowout win over the Raiders, uh, he got 12 points PPR. Duke Johnson, another receiving back against them last week in PPR formats, got 15 points. Those are both good for top 25 finishes at the position. And for Duke Johnson, it was top 15. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with Lewis here. I know it's not sexy. I know it's not fun, but we've got bye weeks rolling around. If you, ha- if you're yeah, a James Conner owner, one. if you're, uh, you know, the, one of the green Bay Packers backs owners or the Seattle backs, and you need, you need a fill here. I don't mind, uh, Dion Lewis. All right. Um, is Derrick Henry a drop at this point? Can you drop yes. Derrick Henry? Okay. Yes. I think so, too. And the pr- and the thing is, is because he's gotten work, Johnny, he just doesn't look good. Right. Like, he just... I don't know how long it's going to be before they have to move to, like, third-string guys like and, and un- understand what they have here. I think we're seeing, uh, you know, the reincarnation of Trent Richardson before our eyes. Yeah, that, that could be true. All right, we're going to, before we get too depressed here, we're going to jump on to this <laughs> next game here. It just here. keeps getting worse just, and worse. <laughs> as I'm going down the stats, I'm just like, oh, gosh. All right, we're going to the next game. we got the Carolina Panthers at the Philadelphia Eagles. This is a 45.5 over under in Vegas, and Philly is favored by four. Travis, did we see enough from this backfield in Philadelphia last Thursday to be confident in starting either one of these running backs. <sighs> yes, I, I I know I took pause there, but I'm actually pretty fired up on Clement. I actually think that if you look at what he did and what he's done uh, with his carries, Clement's been successful. He has a ele- he averages over 11 yards after the catch. Mm-hmm. He did. It, let's break it down here. So Clement's snaps were 26 on the game. He had 11 car- carries and three targets. Smallwood had 44 snaps, 18 carries and two targets, but wasn't as effective as Clement was with his touches. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I think it's a very similar situation to what we saw them try to do with Ajayi that wasn't successful. And that was ease him back from injury. I think that's what they did with Clement here. I'm okay with firing up Clement. Uh, I think that the Panthers aren't anything you're afraid of as far as defense is concerned. Uh, they're uh, they're about middle of the pack. And as a favorite at home, I like the Eagles to have the run game involved here. Yep. Travis, one thing of note, I want to say that uh, – Start Alshon Jeffrey. I want to point this out here. Oh, yeah. Alshon Jeffrey, since he came back, has been the wide receiver eight on the year. Mm. And what's crazy is he's kind of turning into this little mini target machine, which he never really was before. He was more right. It was like always a, like four catches, 60 yards, and you hope he score. Right. But all of a sudden, he, he they kind of change his role, and he's becoming more of that like target monster slash – the fact that they only have really Ertz and him as the two main target. I mean, uh, you have Nelson Aguilar there, but he he's not really doing a whole lot. He's getting some targets, but he's not really doing much with them. And you can really see that Carson Wentz is starting to really trust Alshon. He was building on that rapport last year uh, that he made last year. But yeah, Travis, 28 targets. The big question was last year he, he had a ton of targets, but he only caught like less than – it was like right around 50% of them. Well, he's caught 18 of the 28 targets for 215 yards and three touchdowns. So he's right on pace to match the the touchdown totals of last year, and he's still doing it on, on, in yardage. And so right. for me, fire up uh, Alshon Jeffrey. I, I really like him this week, and chances are that he's going to go against uh, the Butler, who's been – being torched but left and right every single week the guy who is lined up against butler is usually going off for fantasy purposes all right anybody else that you want to talk about on the uh, i mean Ertz, you're going to fire up Ertz is one of the best if not well a lot of people want to debate whether it's travis kelsey or Ertz. 
Um, For me, it's Kelsey. But we'll, I mean, we could we could get into that a little bit later. Right. I think it's apples and oranges. Like if you have right. one of those two, you have a great positional advantage. But that going on sense. the other side of the ball, one of my biggest stay aways this week is Greg Olson, Johnny. I know he's back. He's fully healthy from that injury. And he came back. He got seven targets, four catches, 48 yards. People are like, OK, yes, Olsen is back. But if you look at this Philly defense, they are rounding into form towards that Super Bowl defense they had last year. Mm-hmm. And they are surrendering the fourth least yards, the sixth least touchdowns, and the second fewest average points per game to tight ends. I don't think this is a good spot for Olsen. I think this is a CMC and maybe a Funchess. Like, I think Funchess, that's the way you can attack Philly mm-hmm. is on, on the outside a little bit. And I think so that maybe Funchess and I think that CMC and Cam himself are what's going to get it done for Carolina in this game. And so I, I want to avoid, I know it's hard because tight end is so bad and you waited and you stashed Olsen, uh, but I, I'm fading him. I'm fading him hard in this game. Yeah, I would tend to agree there. Plus you, you have that. I'm just so concerned that he's just going to get injured. He is like just begging to be a, like to catch. Oh my God, my foot again. Right, exactly. Game. Like yeah. you're just begging for that to happen um, on on the same offense, Cam Newton, you're firing him up. Of course, he's a, yeah. he's our number two, I believe, in our in our fantasy rankings. And, and it's this simple: he has two or more passing touchdowns in four straight weeks. Johnny, that's a month of multiple touchdowns. Yep. Cam's doing it; he's getting it done, and he's rushing like a machine out there as well. Of course. All right. Anybody else you want to touch on here? Nah, I'm I'm good, brother. All right. Moving on to the next game, we have the Minnesota Vikings. The unpredictable Minnesota Vikings at <laughs> the New York Jets. This is a 46 point over under Minnesota is favored by four and a half points. Travis. Yes, sir. This backfield is between and this New York Jets backfield is just, I feel like it's uh, another one of these. Uh, I'll go come out to say it, Denver Broncos backfields where <laughs> you don't know which one to start each week because either Chicago, one... Chicago's kind of turning out like that too. But yeah, which one do you feel I more comfortable I, with? It's Powell. Uh, Crow, it, it's been Powell all year. I just think Crow has benefited from some positive uh, game scripts, some fluky touchdown, uh, you know, stuff. And I think that that's really inflated his uh his points on the year but i think powell is playing more snaps he's getting equal or more carries he can catch a whole lot more efficiently i thought i cracked the code last week i thought last week was a good game for crow he spent all week injured he's spending all this week injured the best news for owners that have these backs Mm mm-hmm is for Crow to not play yeah. because the because then Powell owners can start Powell or if you own both you can start Powell or if you're Crow owners you don't have to start Crow yeah. like you can move on and so like that that's the best case scenario for me we touched about it at the top of the show Johnny the crazy Cook conspiracy the C the triple C mm-hmm. uh, the crazy Cook conspiracy going on he is not in here what about Murray here oh, I'm excited well, hold about on. Murray. Yeah, I, I just want to touch on one other thing uh, before we move on to the Minnesota Vikings side of the ball. But Jermaine Curse, um, I, I think that this oh, is yeah. a very solid play, especially if yeah, you're yeah. in a PPR league. The dude saw nine targets. He was nine for nine and 94 yards. Uh, we we saw that uh, Quincy Anunua is injured. He'll be out for a while. Um, so Jermaine Curse instantly slides right into that spot and he seems to have built a pretty nice rapport uh there and so if you're if you're you know bye weeks are happening right now so if, if you need a, a wide receiver dart throw uh Jermaine Curse is someone that uh, I I'm definitely interested in all right Travis go ahead and jump in sorry to interrupt you there uh, no no I I was I wasn't trying to change sides of the ball I guess I was just trying to get into the some more running back talk uh, I'm excited about running backs as you can tell um so for me, though, I wanted to to touch a little bit on that Minnesota running back position. We it's similar to the New York, like just sit cook. Let me know Murray's playing because yeah. the Jets allow one hundred and thirty four point two scrimmage yards to opposing backs. I want some of that action with Latavius Murray, who's coming off a big game against Arizona. The Jets are not as suffocating on defense as we had once pictured them to be as right. they started this year. 
I love Murray in this matchup. And I also want to talk a little bit about Kyle Rudolph. Similar to the rest of the league, he is a very touchdown-dependent tight end now, and that's because he's only getting 11% of his team targets. Listen, Minnesota is vastly turning into Adam Thielen and everybody else. Yeah, this is kind of crazy. It is wild how much Kirk Cousins can count on and just loves showering Thielen with targets and receptions and yardage and touchdowns. And why not? This dude is balling out. He's undrafted. He is straight killing it. He's one of my early picks for fantasy MVPs. And why not? Six straight games with 100 yards. Looking to make it seven this week against the Jets. Mm -hmm. All right, Travis. uh, Tight end uh, uh, Rudolph. He is super touchdown dependent. However, what tight end in this scope of the fantasy world isn't? Right. Um, And he's actually seeing a pretty low target share at 11%. But if you have him, I I doubt you're going to have a better option on the waiver wire than than getting Kyle Rudolph uh, out there. So agreed. All right. And I like both Thielen and Diggs. I think uh, the Jets secondary is a little banged up. Tremaine Johnson, Buster Screen, nagging injuries at this point. So I think uh, it's it's safe to roll them both out. I know that people are down on Diggs because he's been kind of trending downward. I think he's a decent play this week, especially with the Green Bay Steeler wide receivers all on by. You're going to want to roll out some some upside plays, and, and Diggs is a good one. All right. Uh, moving along to the next game, we got the Buffalo Bills at the – oh, you Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Um. Yeah. We, we got the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> uh. The Derek. Just... Hey, the Derek Anderson led Buffalo Bills. To do the Buffalo Bills. Hey man. Huh. I said my thing is like, if you were so stoked on picking up the Colts defense, aren't you a little bit like bummed that Derek Anderson's yeah. starting now? I I totally was. It definitely was a little bit of a bummer like oh man i wish peterman was so oh i got this is really funny travis and i I was kind of hoping to um i wanted to retweet this out but i didn't get the chance to believe it or not on this past sunday's game right nathan peterman gets called up coaching staff goes to him and is like hey josh allen is injured you are now going in against the houston texans defense and I swear to you, you know what he said to the coaching staff? What? Don't worry. I got this. Yeah. <laughs> no, you got didn't. a couple of pick sixes. That's what you got. <laughs> because, yeah, you did not have that game at all. So you have uh, you have the Indianapolis Colts coming in here. This is a 42.5 over under. Not a surprise. All the Buffalo Bills games are uh, low o- under over. Uh, Indianapolis is favored by seven. Travis, uh, we kind of touched on it. T.Y. Hilton a little bit banged up uh, during practice the, this week. The bigger question I want to ask you, Johnny, is with Hilton back, do we see a downgrade to Eric Ebron? So that is the big question that you know a lot of fantasy players are wondering. And okay, you will he get a downgrade in targets? He's, he's averaging um, a, a, a vast amount of of tight end targets right now, but. They don't have anybody else. He's 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 getting fifty targets, so he's averaging um what is that like almost almost uh doing quick math here like five <laughs> he's getting uh, twelve to, to almost twelve 10, tar- 10, 10. 10, 10 targets eight it's like eight point something um well here here's yeah. just some perspective for you Johnny yeah. like and for the people forty three targets on the year that's second for tight ends. 23 catches, that's third, and 249 yards, that's fifth. And we have to remember, was it two games? The first two games, Doyle was involved. Mm -hmm. So these are numbers where he's top five with basically a game of catch-up or a game and a half of catch-up. So we got to wonder, some of that was with T.Y. Hilton and with Doyle, but how much and how much with, with... Hilton back is going to, I don't think it's much. And here's why I'll I'll say that because Naheem's Naheem Hines has taken a step back a little bit in this offense, Chester Rogers and Ryan Grant, like no offense to these guys. They play in the NFL. They're much better at football than I'll ever be. They're trash. They're not, they're not good. They're dropping balls all over the place. I mean, I saw, I almost retweeted this out to you. 
it was just a montage of drops for wide receivers for the Colts. And it was just said, no luck, <laughs> yeah. no luck for wide receivers uh, or for Colts wide receivers. And it's just like 12 different clips of dropped balls. And so what yeah. I'll say is Eric Ebron is, I mean, call me, color me pink here. He is catching a lot of balls <laughs> yeah. like, and he's sure handed well, for this offense. Well, Sure handed. That's kind of that's like an oxymoron, right? Eric yeah. Ebron and sure handed. But yeah. here's the thing that I still remain, even with T.Y. Hilton come back, maybe his targets do drop. Maybe they do. Maybe they go to eight, eight targets a game or uh, seven targets a game. The thing is, he's still going to be a red zone threat because he's that's so big. The, yep. They don't have enough. T.Y. Hilton's a tiny guy. He's not going to get a toss up there. If they're doing a toss up, it's to Ebron. Uh, so I still like him as a uh, a top tight end. We going forward, even with T. Y. Hilton. All right. Um. Anybody else on this side of the ball? Uh, Marlon Mack is an interesting play here, uh, going against this Buffalo Bills defense. But the Bills defensive line is actually kind of stingent, uh, against uh, the run. Yeah. After and- after the start of the year where they gave up a ton of points to the position, they've really cracked down. But I will actually, yeah. I mean, they've only allowed three point seven. Uh, yards per carry over the to backfields over the last uh, four weeks. So, yes, I mean, Johnny, you're talking about it, the things, but I think it's actually a little bit of a collision course because I actually think the Colts offensive line's getting a little bit better. The run game is Marlon Mack has, you know, done something for this run game, 12 carries in 89 yards, similar to what you were saying on Instagram live today with Peyton Barber. I don't know if I fully buy Marlon Mack yet I want to see it again yeah but I think he's worth playing if you if you've held on to him this long and we've got bye weeks going he's definitely worth throwing in your roster um I think that covers well I don't uh, like Andrew Luck here and no. here's why I just think he throws a ton he'll probably keep his floor relatively high based on that because he throws the ball a ton and there's the high over under and the, you know they're going to be favored I just Buffalo has been really good against the against the pass. And you just saw them pick apart Deshaun Watson and Deshaun Watson was coming in pretty, pretty hot into that game. And they they went into into Houston and and did some work against him. Yeah. And then uh, when you're looking at the Buffalo Bills side of the ball, there's not really much that you're going to talk about. But I do think that Shady actually is a decent play here. He's starting to pick up the volume, which we yep. which we expected in the beginning that he wasn't really getting. And so I, I think that uh, you can you can play Shady in this game. Uh, the defense think, for the Colts. Go ahead. Yeah. Defense for the Colts. You want to roll out there. Well, I'm just uh, saying I, the defense for the Colts doesn't really scare me for LaShawn McCoy's purpose. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. 26 touches two weeks ago, 19 uh, touches last week, and those have turned into RB25 and RB20 finishes. Yeah. So those are decent plays. I know you've drafted him a lot higher than that, but you, if you traded for him based – or, God, hopefully you didn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You tra- if you traded for him or if you've stashed him this long, he's actually, put, <laughs> he's actually putting out some decent uh, – some some decent uh, performances there, but I think that uh, sticking with Buffalo and call me crazy here, but with Derek Anderson coming in, Derek Anderson has some familiarity uh, yeah, I with don't. Kelvin Benjamin. So this is a- I don't think that I don't yeah. think that I would be like so ballsy as in to play it this week, even though this is a really nice matchup. Yeah. Uh, so. so well, here's what's he's crazy. Good. Here's but I just a- think that I think Kevin Benjamin is maybe worth a stash because if Derek Anderson keeps this job for a bit, he could just basically shower Benjamin with all all the targets. That could happen. Uh, and I'm certainly, you know, me. This is a guy that's thrown 29 touchdowns in a season. Derek no, no, Anderson. I, I understand that. So, I mean, ju- I, know I, mean him. I mean, trust me, I, 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 I know him because he <laughs> had a. Uh, Major, he had a the second biggest uh, meltdown on a Monday night football game uh, <laughs> next to Denny Green when he got called out for laughing on the sideline when they were getting as beat as they are uh, as badly as tonight. But uh, I digress there. No, but uh, here's what I think is hilarious. This was also a quote came from last weekend. Uh, reporters on the sideline of the, the Bills sideline last week 
uh, Josh Allen before the game. This was like two hours before the game. He was like, he goes up to Calvin Benjamin. He goes, "Hey, Calvin, uh, oh, what yeah, do you yeah. what do you think about running a couple of uh, red zone uh, routes?" And Calvin looked at him. and He goes, "No, nah, I'm good." Like the dude is so lazy, and it's like it sucks because he's. He could be so dominant, right? He's a monster of an athlete. He's he's big. Well, I don't know if that's even true anymore. Because, <laughs> I mean, he's a monster of an athlete at eating. I'll just definitely say that. But he Ooh. could be really, really good. But he doesn't put in the effort. So that's why I'm only just concern. saying, it, yeah. But it, it's listen. not bad. It's a deep day. It's a deep dive. There's no you no sign. If you have an extra spot, why not throw him on your bench? You never know what could happen. All right, talking about throwing him on your bench. We have next up, we got the New England Patriots at the Chicago Bears. Travis, this is a 50 point over under biggest points uh, spread on on today's episode. New England is favored by two and a half points. Talk, but but bench when I when I talk about bench, man, they like bench Jordan Howard last week. And Travis, I don't know what to do. To think about, you know, uh, Jordan Howard versus t- uh, Tyreek Cohen. What what do you what should we tell Whisper Nation? I mean, this is we've well, been, this is probably the most common question we get out of any question so far. I have consistently told people to sell Jordan Howard if you can. I was a buy low can uh, he was a buy low candidate for me when this trend first started, but now unfortunately I have to. And this is my bromance, Johnny. If you remember yeah. our bromance special. Jordan Howard was was my bromance. I and it, it started looking so good. The targets he was getting, um, everything was lining up. But now I look at it. Here's his snap share through the the last five games, or through their five games because they're on. They've had a buy. He went to from seventy one percent to seventy two to sixty two to fifty four to fifty one. Mm-hmm. Whereas Tariq Cohen's gone from forty to 31, to 40, to 47, to 48. So they are they're coming close to a 50-50 split here. I don't like it one bit. I think this matchup actually favors Cohen um, because if you look at what the Pats have just given up back-to-back weeks uh, to Kareem Hunt, and even Naheem Hines got 22 touches against them on that Thursday night game. I just think that Cohen lines up a little bit better. I actually was talking to somebody tonight on Instagram and they asked, what about Jordan Howard for Alex Collins? I'm actually in favor of you taking Alex Collins instead of Jordan Howard. I think their arrows are going in a different direction. Uh, And I think that, man, that's like, that's like, I know it's, I know it's tough, but uh, I just think that who has the better shot to be the sole guy in your opinion in their offenses. Because we're already honestly, I don't think either one of them. I don't. Well, think I actually think it's one. Alex Collins because over the last two weeks, he's really out snapped and out carried Buck Allen, and he's really trending in that direction. Uh, so for me, yeah. I'm okay with you taking Alex Collins rest of season. I mean, I think it's like, what would you rather have, like poopy pants or sand up your nose? Yeah. I just like both of those things just are are horrible. Like they're just they're just awful. I don't know yeah. what well, I don't even think you could say it's it would be like dude, have you ever had wet socks? Like have you ever walked in shoes yeah. with wet socks? Like that have is you just ever so stepped, uncomfortable. Stepped, have you ever had a puppy and you're raising the puppy and in the middle of the night, you go to the bathroom oh. and you step barefoot in a puppy's pile of poop. Oh, horrible. Yeah. Or, yeah, or pee. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's yeah. Uh, that's it for me. OK. So basically, okay. Jordan Howard is the poop underneath my toes. <laughs> yeah. All right. But well, we- anyways, the rest of the bears here, I if Alan Robinson suits up, I think that he's getting enough targets mm-hmm. as in this offense that he's playable, especially against New England, they're not anything to fear on defense just yet. I like Taylor Gabriel. I think he's a guy. He's caught all 12 of his targets over the last two games, and he's got two back-to-back 100-yard receiving games. But, I mean, these are the only two of his of his career. So, yeah. <laughs> so there's a little bit of like, 
there's volatility there, right? So but he's definitely getting the uh, he's definitely getting the. Oh, nice. Fitzy just scored. Sorry, uh, he's definitely he's definitely getting the the target. So I definitely yeah. like that one. All right, anybody? Yeah, Mitchell Trubisky is a guy I'm looking at, Johnny, as a streamer here this week. Um, New England has not been, you know, stingy towards the quarterback. I think he's decent play. He's got a lot of gadgets there. Uh, he seems to be really comfortable in Nagy's offense, especially right before and after the bye. Uh, I think he's worth a stab if you own if you're an owner or Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson this week. Um, on the other side of the ball, oh, actually, I do want to talk about Trey Burton. I don't think Trey Burton's touchdown rate is sustainable. He's not getting a lot of the targets here, especially with the emergence of Tariq Cohen. Well, um, and getting him involved in the passing game. If if. Uh, Robinson is a no go. Yeah, I could yes, see him course. getting much more targets. So that yes. is definitely something to consider. But that would be an upgrade for him and Tariq Cohen, in my opinion. Like Tariq Cohen yeah. is already a better play here. I think he's an even better play if Robinson doesn't go. Yes. Uh, on the other side of the ball, Gronkowski, he hasn't had t- more than twenty percent of the team targets since week one. Yeah. Like even in three games without Edelman. He's only had one of the 28 team targets that they've had in the red zone this year. One. We're talking about Rob Gronkowski, Johnny. You drafted him in the first or the second, likely the second round. Are you panicking? Are you selling Rob Gronkowski? Uh, No, because it's Rob Gronkowski, right? You you always have that hope. Uh, I'm, I would... Rob Gronkowski is the kind of a guy that you're just willing to go down with the ship, right? Like, it, cause you know, it's, it's, it's Rob Gronkowski. What do you, you can't necessarily trade him. Away. You can trade him away and you're going to get value even though he's had a it's bad, like, a bad year so like far. South Park. Right? Yeah. But you're it's like, like, I thought this was America. Right. But <laughs> he's a guy, he's a fantasy player where you're just like, you know what? If this is a sinking ship, I'm willing to go down with it just because you know that at any point he could have, he could be all of a sudden return to his, is normal and he dominates like he should. Uh, but there is a definite concern, uh, there, uh, certainly, um, when you're talking about, about Gronk, because flash still hasn't been fully integrated into this offense. He's getting very little targets to this point, And every word out of new England's camp is that, uh, Josh Gordon is going to be getting more and more, you know, time on the field, running more routes. I mean, even Belichick can't hold his con- his excitement for Josh Gordon. Yeah. Like they are, they are working him into this. He led the team with twenty six percent of their targets and twenty eight percent of their air yards last week. So yeah. Josh Gordon is really uh, taking over in this offense, which not just a not just a downgrade to Gronk, but maybe a downgrade to the ceiling of Julian Edelman. I think Edelman will still get work, but his ceiling maybe be a little bit capped here with Josh Gordon's existence. Maybe I'm not so worried about Julian Edelman. Um, well, most of his work is through yardage yeah, anyway. It's just yeah. underneath stuff. So uh, right. they're, they're kind of two different styles. Uh, Hogan, on the other hand, I mean, Hogan wasn't really oh, doing anything. Well, yeah. But yeah. Okay. Uh, New England Patriots running backs. You're starting them both. I think you could start them both if you have both of them. You can certainly start both of them. Um, but Shout out to the fantasy footballers, actually. Uh, they were talking about these two backs, and they dubbed them the new Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram. Well, I think it was one of their fans that called into the show or talked to the show. Yeah, I actually like that comp. I think this offense is going to be really good. Uh, the defense doesn't seem to be very good, so they're going to be, uh, you know, Score. They're going to be in scoring position quite a bit this year, and I think that you, like you said, you can start both those guys. Yep. Would really love to see Sony Michelle get more targets, though, Johnny. Like, yeah, we know he could odd. catch. They yeah. used him as a pass catcher in Georgia. I, I don't know. I just, just yeah. I mean, James White is just killing it. How do you go away from that? I guess. Yeah, it's just it's really odd. Oh, um, all right. So we're gonna <laughs> get here to this last game of today's episode, and that is the Cleveland Brownies at. The Bucks. I'm actually really excited for this game. It's a 48 and a half point over under. Tampa Bay is favored by three and a half points. Travis, the Browns have looked pretty decent this year. 
However, well, Carlos, the last well, couple weeks they've. Yeah, maybe not. But Carlos Hyde, though, on the other hand, <sighs> um, oh, is yeah, he's been steadily declining each and every single week. Um, as as the year goes on, a lot of fans are are talking. There's a lot of rumblings that they want to see more Nick Chubb. Um, but we are yet to see that in a game. What do you, what are you thinking about this? What do you, what do you think about Carlos Hyde? What do you think about this backfield moving forward? Is it just going to get muddier and muddier as we as we get further along into the season? Yeah, I mean, you look at his volume and what he was doing before. He was scoring touchdowns, but then you look at the last two weeks, Johnny RB thirty three, mm-hmm. and then RB fifty two the past two weeks. But he's not ceding any work to Nick Chubb. We haven't seen it, and so for me. The Bucs lost Gerald McCoy in this game, and he was the one guy in their defense or in the game uh, against Atlanta. He was he's the one guy in their defense on that line that's really been stout. That's really, you know, and that was the thing is you could pass all over on Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. So you weren't really running on them as much, especially with Gerald McCoy there. So I actually have Carlos Hyde as a play in my player stay away article up at the fantasy whispers dot com. I have Jarvis Landry as a play. I have Baker Mayfield as a play. I think you light up your Cleveland offensive players because everybody lights up the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They've allowed a 300-yard passer in every single game this year. Yeah. I mean, they're last in the league at opposing quarterback completion percentage with 76.8%. And the touchdown rate is 8.8%, and that's also last in the league. So they are just getting torched by opposing offenses. And so that means start up David Njoku, Jarvis Landry, Baker Mayfield, Carlos Hyde, and even in some deep cases, and especially in PPR, Duke Johnson. I love I love Carlos, or I mean, I don't love Carlos. I love David Njoku this week. I think that, you know, we, he's seen a steady increase in targets each and every single week uh, with Baker Mayfield at the helm. I love him. Uh, we talked about Baker being a very solid pickup if you need to uh, f- flex your or not uh, if you need to stream your quarterback for the next month. Baker could be that guy um, that helps you out. He's got a lot of good matchups coming up. On the other side of the ball, Travis, uh, we've got the the Bucks with one of the most potent offenses. And Jameis Winston getting his second start of the year. He had a monster game last weekend. Do you see similar things happening this weekend uh, against this Cleveland Browns defense that has actually given up quite a bit to quarterbacks uh, lately? Yeah, I I like Jameis Winston. Here's the thing. It's not going to matter much if Jameis Winston throws a couple picks like he did last week because they have no defense so he is going to continue to have to throw in every game i will say that if they didn't have any running game which they haven't until last week yeah he would be even more valuable and that's why we saw fitzpatrick do what he did um i do think that the running game could round into form i think peyton barber looks a lot better under this offense with Jameis winston uh they seem more committed to actually running him a little bit more too so we'll see but i love firing up deshaun jackson mike evans oj howard uh, I'm fading Cameron Braid a little bit more than OJ Howard. I just think yeah. OJ Howard they use as a wide receiver. Yeah, they're because... using more and more. Uh, Cameron Braid only had one reception. Yeah, so for, uh, 15 yards and a touchdown last week. Uh, so yeah, he's, he's right. becoming a little bit more risk at play there. Uh, so for sure. Um, anything else you want to add with this game before we let we let Whisper Nation go? Just, just Peyton Barber. Uh, Basically, the Browns have allowed 122.2 rushing yards per game. That's 29th out of 32 teams. So Peyton Barber sets up for a real nice game here if they continue to give him uh, those touches they gave him last uh, week. That was 16 touches, uh, including the passes as well. So I like Peyton Barber. All right. That's it for today's show, Whisper Nation. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time joining us, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the show. We do this every single week. You can also catch more of our content on the fantasywhispers.com. We got Travis's uh, Big Travis starting sits. We put up our rankings on there as well. And you can always check out our last podcast on anywhere that you could get 
any platform you get your podcast that's uh apple play apple podcast stitcher or google play travis let them know where we can get on our social media that's right. We're on Instagram at The Fantasy Whispers. You can hit us up on Facebook, search The Fantasy Whispers. And of course, we're at on Twitter with at TF Whispers. Listen, Instagram is a major point for us. If you like graphics with a lot of our information and stats, you can head there. And like Johnny said at the top of the show, we're going live every single day now, pretty much giving you updates and answering questions, as well as our live show on Sunday, getting that last minute advice. Listen, if you're listening to this podcast that means you're prepping for the week get on there hour before game time on instagram give us a follow there and you won't be dissatisfied i promise we're answering those questions as fast as we can uh it's one of the things we've been pumped up for is our interaction with the fans is very good uh per our fans per the whisper nation so we love you guys we're doing this for you and until next time that's johnny game time hicks and i'm big travi and we're out all right peace Thank you for listening to the Fantasy Whisperers podcast. You can hear more from John and Travis on Google Play, SoundCloud, and iTunes. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at TF Whisperers.